those balls a little. My name is Laura Albert McClay, and I'm an Associate Professor of Industrial and Systems Engineering. Oh, so bracketology and math are a great pair. You can kind of watch in a game, but that's just one data point. And if you look at different teams' schedules, you have wins and losses, of course, but you also have strength of schedule. How good were the teams um, that a team played, and how overwhelming were their wins and losses. And math can help us quantify those things and balance out some of that criteria to figure out who might be the best teams. And a Markov chain is a math model that helps us understand how a system evolves over time. So it's used for things like epidemiology, the stock market, the spread of disease, and so on. And it's also it could be used to model uh, sports teams and figure out um, how well they're ranked. And what's really cool about Markov chains is that it looks at the network structure between teams. So it looks at who you play, and it can take strength of schedule into account. Vito Brown, slam dunk, thank you. And when we do this, we can figure out how quality the wins are, and we can weigh things like strength of schedule to rank our teams. So when I'm filling out my bracket, there's a couple of things that I do. First, I look at some of my favorite ranking methods. Of course, mine at Badger Bracketology is my most favorite. Sometimes you can see that the lower seed might be ranked higher, and that's a usually a good upset to pick. The 5, 12, and 7, 10 upsets um, happen more than we'd expect mathematically. So there's something about the human element of seeding those teams that produces a lot of upsets. Third is that statistically we see that preseason rankings matter, which is a little bit surprising given that no games have been played at that time. But preseason rankings reflect things like athleticism of the team and so on, and that seems to make a difference in the tournament. So it's something to take a look at. Students have so much intuition about sports, and it gives them such an opportunity to learn a little bit more about a subject than a classic textbook example. When we, we're looking at this world we live in and all the data that we have available to us, uh, we can't look at all the data, right? We need algorithms and math to sort through things and figure out which things are the most important, right? And so that's a ranking problem. And part of what I want as an educator is to teach students to come up with the next big idea that ha isn't there yet. And fun things that we do in class, like talking about bracketology and ranking teams, is something that can get the wheels turning. At least that's my hope.